Excited into our game one, heading to PS2 here. Captain Euro versus Javi on Earth. I'm really interested about the Pichu matchup. You don't see a lot of people playing this character anymore, honestly. Yeah, but right now, uh, definitely even on percentages right now, Javi pushing him towards the center of the stage with his projectiles. But Euro is definitely giving him a run of his mount. He's in the lead on percentages with 38 compared to 44. Oh, but just as I say that, Javi on Earth, evening it up, getting the lead. Oh, wait. It's just back and forth between oh, these players. Yeah. Both these players really scrapping for the percent here. I mean, Pichu is the glass cannon of this game. I mean, she dies at 50, 60 percent. Javi's main goal here as a character villager who usually struggles to kill, he's going to have a really, really fun time with this matchup, honestly. For sure. What the big tool Javi on Earth has is definitely when he goes on his down B to like grow the plant, he gets an axe. And that axe is just basically the same thing as a smash attack. Mm -hmm. It is frame six. Crazy, crazy speed, huge kill potential. And not only that, is looking at this matchup too, if you've noticed, this Lloyd Rocket that Javi keeps throwing out is covering the T Jolts from Pichu completely. I mean, it's got enough health to get rid of them and remove one big approach from Captain Euro entirely. For sure, but right now it's just a slobber knocker with uh, Javi on Earth at 138%, Pichu at 137 and just as I said that, Javi on Earth loses the first dog. Looks like Captain Euro might be doing an upset this early on, but we would never count Javi on Earth out, right? Never. Now, the, the local CFL legend himself making that quick bracket run as he normally does here and looking... Oh, I like the recovery. Wow, what a yeah. setup for 46%. Yeah, I know. What a lot of Pichus like to do towards the edge is they definitely want to go for their downer to spike off an opponent. Mm -hmm. And look right here, getting the percentages going. Got the grab towards the corner and just forcing him there. But Javi able to go back on center stage. A Euro getting a jab lock. Nice, but no kill here. Close, though. Yeah. Right now, it's looking a little too careful for Javi's part. Like, I know he's playing it safe, doing a lot of damage, but nothing to really finish off Pichu. Then again, anything could finish off Pichu. Honestly, the aggression from Javi definitely has to come out a little more here. He's playing very hesitantly. But even just the dash attack punish here, he's just not in the right spot, but there's My brain. the glass cannon, man. That yeah. is how light Pichu is. She will die to anything here. Yeah, I just can't believe it right now. It was just like one moment on the side of the stage, got hit by a fair. Pichu was a little bit off and got hit by a fair again and took the stock. Javi still making it work out with his second stock right here at 121, getting pushed by the edge by Euro, but it's not enough to stop our champion. Ooh, Man, I gotta stop doing smash. these commentator curses. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, you're calling it out, but they are proving you wrong each and every time here. Both players exerting a lot of pressure. That would have been it. I really like the attempt of the forward smash coming from Javi. He just like, you're at 83. This is a giant like, bowling ball to your head. It might kill. Oh, yeah. Ooh, and the pressure here. Captain Euro has yeah. got some big percent on the board. What's the edge guard? It's unbelievable how literally even this last stock is between both players. 84 to 96%. Ooh, the up smash, but he's a little too late on that. Euro shield coming out. Yeah, I like the defense coming out from Javi, though. Even though we we're not seeing him as aggressive, this defense is paying off as Captain Euro is using his Thunder Jolts to hurt himself, racking up the percent, making it easier for Javi to kill him with literally a grab. For literally center stage, too. I'm telling you, light characters, that is their problem, especially Pichu. I mean, you do percent to yourself, you're extremely light, you're going to die through some crazy, crazy things here. And uh, Javi... Barely taking it to game one, though. I mean, Captain Euro holding his own. For sure. I was wondering if what kind of counter pick Pichu would do because he wants the stage where he can, like, fly around, but kind of, like, his aggressive style of just trying to dunk his opponents, I would say, for the down airs. He wants to make that easy. And just running it back, you know what? I love it. I mean, it's a decent stage. If you go too, too small of a stage, you can kind of counter zone villager, but Javi, really good at controlling space. So I think a bigger stage might work out for the movement options that Pichu has. Oh, for sure. When we see in game one with the fares coming out from Javi, taking early percentage, especially the second stock of the last game, was astonishing. But Captain Euro just keeping the aggression going, keeping Javi on his toes. The defensive style we see from his nares and fares is working out for Javi, but who's going to take out the first stock, to be honest? The footstool and that trip, that's crazy. Yeah, Javi was able to footstool Captain Euro over, but again, they're both on center stage with nearly even percentages. And no 
notice now Captain Euro really hesitant to use these Thunder type moves as they all do damage to Pichu here. He's been at the beginning of that stock. What a down tilt call out on the jump. Yeah, definitely Javi waiting on the platform, ready for Euro's jump to come in and sneak a kill. Nice. If it grab here, Javi definitely changing his momentum from game one. You can tell he's adapted a lot to the playstyle now. Yeah, for sure. It still doesn't seem like he changed much because he's still defensive and ill. Yeah, that is confirmed. Yeah, that's again, these players surprising me with their insta kills mid sense. I mean, they have big instincts here, both of them ready on reaction. But that is going to be the stock here. Javi with a bigger lead than last game for sure. Yeah, this is definitely looking like he's ready to run this out and move on to winner's round three. But Captain Nero has a few things to say going off stage like that. But amazing recovery back on the platform and still able to get the edge guard. I like how he got rid of that tree too. It's really important to keep Axe out of play here against your light character. Fast option, good kill option too. 100% agree with you. And right now coming out with the Nairs from Captain Nero. I like that movement he's going on with Nairs right now. Throughout this uh, first game, which kind of causes downfall, is the Thunder Jolt. It kept adding on the percentages, and Javi was able to use that to secure a kill. Yeah, so, you know, they weren't even doing anything. I mean, Void Rocket completely covered those options, so the use of falling in there is definitely helping out Captain Nero. But is it helping him enough here? Yeah, he's still going for those same options of like, oh, he's gonna get up, forward smash. But Javi's just spacing a little bit too well to make sure he's out of that danger range. But you know, you never know it could work. Looking out for it here. More shield pressure on Javi, but this is that jab. Captain, you're at a really high percent, especially for a character like Pichu. He's kind of swinging for the ropes at this point here. Another good hit will kill. Oh, kicking it. it is. Yeah. Uh, definitely going on. All right, we're going to game one and winners round two. Town and City is our first stage pick here, and so far, both players just kind of scrapping at the moment. The overextended dash tag, though, is going to get weird into a bit of a combo cycle here. Yeah, definitely for sure right now, getting some good hits going on. Nice jab here. But he up these to get out of that pressure. But I feel like Tachyon noticed that, because obviously, your instinct into being... Uh, jab like that is either roll away or just jump out and get out of the way. Use your escape option if you've got one. And Game & Watch has a very good escape option. It's that up being really, really fast. Invincible on startup. Yeah, but you definitely don't want to be predictable about it because trust me, I think Tachyon has a lot of experience from multiple Smash games to notice that. Down Smash not connecting through Tachyon with a lot of pressure right now. And that fair barely missing. Yeah, I'm trying to see what what uh, Weird's plan is right now because he's just mostly my what I'm seeing right now is just squirming around and trying to see what he can go in. But Tachyon, just like that, taking the stock and ready for the next option. I think one big thing that Tachyon's doing as well that's kind of counteracting Weird is playing really patient. His approach is very hesitant. He knows Game Watch, a character that will grab you, make you eat. 60% and you have to hold it. So good on Tachyon to be patient about it. Yeah, but one transition over. Tachyon has done 52% over to Weird and charging up that force, man. Tachyon's like, you charge away. I'm just going to chill over here. And look at that escape right now. Looking when to go in, knowing the type of damage Game & Watch can do right now. I think one big thing too right now for Tachyon is him getting the download. He's just seeing what Weird's options are going to be and really punishing them. God, even going all the way downtown, still couldn't get Tachyon's stock right there. And Tachyon's just living away. Yeah, exactly, going back to yep. standard stage, no problem. I mean, yeah. that Pikachu up, the up, the quick attack, completely negates the edge guard or the ledge trap scenario. I mean, it just gives Pikachu a free option to get back into stage. Something that makes this character so viable. Yeah. And I love how patient Tachyon is too. Like, even though he just lost stock right there, but he knows like when to perfectly go in against weird like you threw in that smash attack up smash down smash I'm gonna wait a little bit more to see where I can find my pure opening so I can just tack on damage You know one thing I love about weird as well is that use of the side B I mean you don't see a lot of game watchers doing that But he is down in percent right now and a, a nine hammer would change the tempo of this game tenfold right now uh, no fear. Ooh. There Good. you go. I love the traps on the down up air right now coming from the platform. You know, nowhere for Tachyon to escape but the edge in there. Ooh. Oh my god, out of nowhere. The 
Taking a hammer, taking it. Yeah, definitely great work from Weird. Taking the lead just like that. And but do you know what we call that nine hammer? We call that the Weird Zone. Well, right now, he just evened it back up, so it can go anyone's game this first one. And Tachyon is not afraid to rack up this percent. No Weird has got to go for another miracle right now to take back the lead. The drag downs, that is almost completely true right there. 57% on lock. But Weird with the drag down there up air. Yeah, right now Tachyon's just taking his time getting back on stage, even though he's on the edge. Bacon won to dash attack, that was nice. Yeah, and I still love it right now, even though Tachyon is like, all right, he's just charging these smash attacks. I don't need to do anything. It is oh. okay. He going in. I feel like Weird is being a crowd pleaser right now, getting everyone behind him, watching his set. I mean, you said Jax showed up, but so did CFL. 100%, we got a regional disperse in the crowd. And I'm loving it. Weird looking real close here. He goes for the side B, but overextends with it. No way! Yeah. Oh. He saw that back here and knew right to punish it with his forward smash. Tachyon moving on the game one. What a close game one. If anything, I told you that nine hammer is a huge momentum switch for Weird. That was such a good play. But, but sad and sadly enough, not enough. No, not enough. I mean, I think another thing, too, is he tried to use side B a little bit too much near the end of there. Got a little predictable. I mean, look, you nine hammer shield, it breaks. 100%. That's a Game & Watch kill on Pikachu. Absolutely. Another light character, yeah. So, I respect it, but at the same time, you've got to know that that's a gamble. And I mean, he gambled, and I respect it, but, you know, doesn't always work out that way. And I'm excited for this game, too, especially with the way Weird and Tachyon are both playing today. Okay, but uh, did not notice what stage they picked on. Big Star, saw me out there. Small battlefield here. It, I mean, a difference. Usually we see we start in PS2. Some people hit the small battlefield. A bit smaller distance between the two, and the undersides of the stage a lot different. So a lot of players like to pick it. Uh, yeah. That's kind of a counter pick, but. Uh, it was more than just a counter pick. Did we saw that earlier? Weird or Tachyon was getting that music. They want that power up. Mm -hmm. uh, my background in Blaze Blue Central Fiction, trust me, when I'm down in a set, especially in a three out of five, I'm down 0-2, I gotta get back to the stage to pick my music. Oh yeah, and look, the music counter pick is a big play. It's more of a motivation to do better in the set. Right now, it's not working too well with Weird, while Tachyon only at 25%, Weird at 74 uh, it's still doable as he's getting the momentum and center stage on Weird's part. I mean, Weird definitely showed last game that in his deficit, he made the comeback very quickly and almost took that game from Tachyon. Yeah, we can't make a guarantee again, but we'll never know. That's how, that's what's great about Game Watch, we'll never know. You'll never know because it, there's always that chance. I mean, look at the nine hammer that happened last game. That could happen this game. Okay. Oh my oh. god. Caught that. What a good call out by Tachyon. For sure. Knowing the getup coming from Weird and forward smash away his stock. And now going back to the neutral right now. And Tachyon doing his damage. Drag down percentage. Only able to. Ooh. Did I say only 23? I'm at 49%. 49%. He said, come back here. I'm not done yet. We still yeah. comboing. Yeah. Knowing the cloud is going to reach and drag them down with a thunder from Pikachu. Right. Weird still trying to find his in here. I think the problem is he's struggling to get a kill set up or just enough percent. Tachyon's definitely playing a lot, a lot more hesitantly than he was last game. And I mean, last game he already was playing pretty hesitant. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, and not enough right there to take the stop from Tachyon's fair on the edge. And they're back on neutral stage. That's what I love about Weird's gameplay right now. Even when he's pushed to the edge, he gets back up and establishes neutral. I want the center stage. Oh, but the jab block by Tachyon to take the second stock here. Big two, two stock lead now. For sure. Weird is definitely going for the catch up. Anything can still happen. I'm not giving Weird a count out of this match. Mm -hmm, not yet. He is still in it to win it. Right, good dash there. So give it the back air. Oh, Another the one. Down back here, but it's not enough. Yeah. Pikachu lives those. Yeah, Pikachu's recovery is just astonishing right now. You gotta do something dangerous against the quick attack to make it back. You know, I, I respect Tachyon for not overextending here on these edge guards. I mean, one or two back airs is just fine. Please explain to me, Big Sauce. I have no idea what just happened. <laughs> so that move is completely intangible on Game & Watch when the when it moves. So but like, was movement, that his up smash? That was up smash, yeah. Completely intangible, his body and his head invincible, so just powered right through it and didn't take any percent either, by the way. Unbelievable. 
This is something different <laughs> compared to uh, King K. Rule's like armor attacks. It's yeah, it's really nutty. Some of the characters with tangibility in this game work so so well. Yeah, this is going an intense set right now. Oh, but weird still can't find the kill here, and the percent is really racking up. Tachyon completely understanding the position that he's in. I mean, look, why should he approach? He don't exactly. Need to. He's on a two stock lead. Anything can possibly kill him because Game Watch has an amazing up smash, down smash, even tilts that can kill on this stage. So, no risks. He doesn't yeah. want to overextend. He can even push this to time. Please don't push this to time, but he could push it to time. He could push it to time. He's got three minutes. Unless he's going to go for this edge guard here. Yeah, good. Wait. Down smash and the thunder. Yeah, down smash the thunder is such a tremendous thing for a lot of Smash games, including this one. Anyway, going in, X-Men versus Unship Nut. And First Blood, already by X-Men with the forward tilt. Man, they came in swinging, both of them ready to go here. Yeah, and that's what I love the thing about Cloud right now. You can just like hang back and forth, throwing your sword around, mm -hmm. and then you just automatically have the lead. Like, look at that. He just swung the fair right there, able to jab right back. Yeah, Unship Nut definitely has to check out when he can go in against x because he knows his movement. Look already, that shield already nice. looking like a nut. Using that upbeat to just get him off of him right there. That was really good pressure. I mean, x exerting a lot of it. You've got to use Link's get off me tools. Very important. Oh, Once my again, God. using hero spin. Yeah, and that almost like could be enough to take his stock. x has got to be careful when he's trying to poke his shield because... Unship is knowing when he can go in and out. Mm -hmm. oh, I love so it right now. Right there. And Limit on deck again. What's the play? Nice. Limit cross slash. Yeah. In the DI from Nut. Uh, ah, I, I love what the attempt right there. Trying to see what he can do with his bomb to get out of that situation. But Axel is like, nah, I got a strong dash attack. Mm -hmm, I'm going to use it. I mean, I catch you landing on safe. And he was ready for the get off me tool that time and punish it. Look at this percent lead. Oh. He wasn't ready that time. Again, Ship's usage of up B is really good. It may be like, in my mindset, it's like a, a DP motion from a fighting game mm -hmm. where you get an inv invincible move just coming out of an uh, unsafe option, but you know. Work out in favor and smash turns with the up B. Yeah, right now, coming. Air coming in and charging limit here on deck. Early on the blade beam, though, probably a little bit too early. Cross slash not gonna kill yet. Xmas waiting for the pressure approach. This is honestly a good matchup because you can be just mesmerized in looking at the players go bad and back and forth with swords. I mean both characters really going in for those big swings. I definitely think it will be important here for Unship to get these setups that he can get for better percent. I mean, he's getting a lot of these taps, he's getting 10, 15 percent, but it's just not enough compared to what Xmas is doing when he is getting 60 plus percent on interaction. Yeah, good, good read right there. Luckily, he was able to come back safely. Uh, a lot of clouds do with like they just jump down uh, cross slash just to finish off the stock if they could. But uh, unship recovering high just to make sure he stays alive. And again, slobber knocker in center stage, moving back and forth one side of stage to another. Unship. Pushing Xmas to a corner. Trying to use that bomb again, but not timing it well. I love the attempt from Xmas. Yeah, there it is. You've got to watch out for that. I mean, look, a stock up. There is no reason not to do something like that on an overextension. I'm going to say this from one cloud to another. Once we start going in, we're not going to stop until your stock yeah, is gone. No way. Especially with the, the damage output that Cloud has on Limit. I mean, there are so many setups in the Limit Cross Slash. Now a setup into Finishing Touch. I mean, it, it is crazy what Cloud can do if you let him, and you can. I think there's got to be a lot more projectile play here by Unship, for sure. And making sure to catch his jumps, because definitely Cloud, one of his like weaknesses is his recovery. Once his jump is gone, he goes straight up. He can drift, he can air dodge, but if you can catch that, he's done. And uh, you know, I definitely like the character switch here. I mean, not only are you shorter, but your projectiles are faster and your recovery is a lot better as well as Young Link. So 
definitely interesting character switch to yeah. say the least. Yo. Maybe a mold breaker, if anything. Yo, the, the mashups right now from x -Mas? Just like, Unship is like, wait, what do I do? And x -Mas just punishes accordingly, trying to get this lead going. Yes, showing the grabs Fair are not enough. Back here, that was so clean. Yeah. For players, it's always worried to pummel uh, early percentages because, as we saw from Xmas, if he can just mash out, like by pressing all the buttons on his controller just enough times, he can easily get out and do a counter attack. Mm -hmm. I mean, he tries to F smash there, though. I don't know, but that limit cross slash is going to take the first stock very early on here. Yeah. I think Nut is still trying to adapt to the smaller hitbox that Young Link has got. He cannot space as far as he can with Link. Good setup, though. All right, we're back at the corner right now. Unship at 48% and X% at 98. What a call out on the grab there right before it connects using Limit Cross Slash again. Himself a big lead. <laughs> All right. And the up smash call out on the fall in and that's gonna be the second stock X was up by two. For sure. Yeah, still not giving up on this right now from Unship. Ooh, okay. Tries to cover it with Nair, but does not work here. Okay. Good back air there by Xmas. Yeah, he has just completely changed the pace of this game. Oh no, he really, oh. hey, But that's what he needs to do. He needs to find these ways to take away his jumps and get those kills. Yeah, he cr you know what's funny? He cross slashed that bomb and it actually got him killed. He could have just gone above it. For sure. No way, he tried to ledge Trump with Uppy. I love these attempts by Xmas. I mean, he is getting so creative with the way he wants to approach. Oh. No way, what a call. Amazing Xmas. spacing there too, just right under the edge. Wow. He knew he's got to grab this edge. Yeah. It's not enough to reach. All right, getting into our game one here. It's going to be Arkma versus Accelerate. This is actually a Vortex special. You can see this pretty often here on Wednesdays if you've seen the Vortex Esports Arena stream. So yeah. not an infrequent matchup. But you know, it's inevitable. This is a top 24 match in this winner's round three. Mm -hmm. So you can, once you get as far as you can in winners, it's kind of hard to avoid these things. Oh yeah, I mean at this point you're gonna fight your friends. There's gonna be some team kills going on from regions. It's inevitable, like you said. Yeah. Yeah, I love the attempts coming out from Arca, keeping the distance and trying to get those pokes in. Ooh, nice control, but good air dodge by Accelerate. Yeah, we used to drain out from the projectiles and the what's the down B called if you know? Oh, that's the Phantom Knight. For Definitely. Zelda? Yes. Yes. That is going to be Knight. That move, huge stage control and presence. I mean, you're fighting one and a half people when that thing is out. Oh, just like, like that. Exactly. Yep. Pushing him toward the edge just like that. Even though, like, the projectile game for Accelerate is astonishing. Using his fire arrows, his boomerang, and getting the stabs right when it's important. I think one thing I really like about Accelerate's play with Boomerang is that he never he never usually hits it when he's throwing it forward. He loves to get that hit on the way back. And the, the angles. I've noticed the angles. Yeah, the angles. He gets these lethal angles that you don't expect to hit you. They give you one tap, and then he sets you up for either 50, 60, 70% or a kill. Yeah. Even though they're even on percent right now, or not in percent, in stocks, I'm just like... All over the place right now, 45% and 5% right now between these two players. Did he just fair him into 30 just yes. like that? Yep, I mean, that's lightning kick for you. You have to be careful with Zelda. Not only is it a fast option, it's a very strong one if you can hit the sweet spot. And I'm liking the neutral game right now. Like, Arkmez looks like more adaptive than he did on the first stop. Oh, yeah. So able to just push Accelerate back, but not enough. 85% right now and on the edge. Oh, but that teleport recovery is going to get Arkma sent back off stage yet again. Yeah, it's just so hard to get what he wants, but luckily, that neutral B getting... Oh, I'm scared. Oh, my God. Oh. Amazing roll trying to get out of the frame shot from that up smash. Oh, but that's... A, what a great poke, Zare into Nair. I mean, that's another Young Link bread and butter is you either hit Zare or neutral B and then Nair, and it kills. I mean, great setup by Accelerate, inconsistent. 
gonna be used to grab right there. I like the footsies game from uh, Accelerate as well. He's doing a lot of back and forth movement. Oh, trying to get these arc mobs. I was... love that arc man position where Accelerate needs to be and finish them off off stage with that down air. Can he do it again though? I don't know. I mean, you know what's funny is that was a weak hit down air too. That's how much percent Accelerate was. And add. two strong hit fares has got 61% on Accelerate's last stop. It's not over just yet. No, not yet. Accelerate. With stage control yet again, Arkma really quick to try to defend himself there. This could go either way. This is astonishing right now. Back and forth between both players, both nearly at high percent. I'm on the edge of my seat with both of their projectiles and long distance moves going against each other, but Accelerate was able to break the momentum. Oh, he missed the side tilt though. Nice recovery. Yeah, now Arkma's on the edge. Let's see what Accelerate's got. All right, back on neutral control, but Accelerate nice. is pushing Arkman to the other side of the stage. I love the stage friends with Accelerate. This back though, it's not gonna kill. Yeah. But Knight is in play now, he's gotta be careful. Look how deep he goes to recover. You know he was ready for that. Accelerate's knowledge of his character saved yeah. him so much, but one up throw Will stolen kill. from Arkma. I mean, what a recovery from Accelerate, though. To go all the way to the corner like that, uh, that's impressive. I hate to say it, but still not enough. No, not enough, man. Yeah. But, I mean, the, it just takes plays like that with him with a lead. That's all he needs. He cannot keep the gap so close with Zelda. With the surprise lightning kicks that Arkma's got, I mean, look at the percent. It just totally climbs so fast. <laughs> All right, game two. Are we going to the same stage? Uh, yeah. we, we're not practicing counter picks here. We are going right uh, back to PS2. We're, we're from the, the Orlando CFL area, bro. It's like <laughs> even Vortex has been affected by it. We just want to go to PS2. I mean, none of these players care about the rule sets. They don't care about the stages. They just said, when is I PS2? Play. I want to play, yeah. What a combo there by Ark, but to get 50% on lock. And again, another lightning kick coming out. I mean, I'd like to say if Arkma can take this game, it would be kind of an upset. I mean, Accelerate, another Vortex legend here, been winning these tournaments consistently as well. So, I mean, can Arkma make that upset? Right now, it's looking possible. Whoa, what a use of teleport. I love this momentum shift coming from these players because honestly, back in game one, Accelerate had all the momentum in the beginning. <gasps> And the now, weak hit downer again! Arkmas has got this game in the grasp. He's understanding, he's waiting, mm -hmm. and counterpicking each movement to his like advantage. Yeah, I mean, and look at Acce like Accelerate's movement. He is struggling to get in here now. Arkma, wow, again with his presence in the kill! What is this going on? What an upset Arkma. right now! Arkma's playing beautifully right now. This, this is why I'm an Arkma fan. Yeah, yeah. Woo! Arkma, look at him go, man. He is not afraid, and he has got all the momentum right now. He doesn't even allow Accelerate to get his kill confirmed. But that was nice. That was really nice. Yeah. And no, no matter how good Arkma is playing right now, can he keep it up? Because I know Accelerate, and I've seen it in like, we've both seen it. Yes, we have. Juicy game nights where he's like, I won. I won. I, out of nowhere. And exactly. he'd be in like a huge deficit too. It's nutty. Exactly. He's doing a great job right now, just keeping the pressure, setting his projectile traps as much as he can, but and not getting hit by anything dangerous. Here's the problem though, is that Young Link is so light, and it could literally take an up air or a lightning kick to kill him already. And he is already, he's down a whole stock. Look at the lead Arkma has. But I, I look at this right now. It, it's more there like, even though he's on a stock disadvantage, percentage disadvantage, the momentum is doing great. Like, he has this control, as you can see, going on for this game. Like, remember what we said, Arkman, in the beginning of the set, how that control is completely shifted. Like, he has only lost bits and pieces, and he's slowly climbing on Arkman. What a read from Accelerate! Yeah, getting the grab right there, pushing him towards the edge. Yeah, accelerate, almost got Ooh, it. Oh, the up air. Yeah, trapping with that up air right before the fair. There it is again, but no kill, good DI. Oh, good use of the projectile to slow down the up B. 
Accelerate has slowed this game down immensely in his favor. That was an amazing trade, definitely on his favor. No way! And that's it. And Arkma taking game two, the upset against Accelerate, he pops off. DFL versus Jacksonville, once yeah. again. We're starting off our game one here. G Money choosing to stay near the ledge. I mean, this is smart. You can laser camp Bowser, and you should. Dang, looking at this, like, even though he just got a big hit from that down air, G Money is looking like he understands this matchup. He's like, Are you sure you want to go PS2 against me? I don't know, bro. I got this on lockdown. And right now, G Money with a big percent lead. Falco, the kind of character that is going to eat Bowser alive for a little bit. But keep in mind, Falco is a little bit on the lighter side, so he's got to be careful himself. He dies at earlier percents in this matchup. For sure, and still pushing Kawhi to a corner, just poking at his shield and racking the percent. Ooh, that's going to be some big damage here. Oh, now they're matching percent. Great work from Kawhi with that fire breath. See, the worst part about it, though, is when you're playing against Bowser, even if you're matching percent, you're losing. Because he's heavy, but G-Money, sh oh, no, no way! <laughs> Kawhi with the thumbs up. He's like, yeah, man, I don't care. USD, that works for me. Yeah, but uh, it looks like G-Money's on phase. He's able to go back to his plan, poking it through, getting some damage as much as he can. Already at 48%. G-Money's still at zero. Why he's unable to touch him. Nice downer there to kind of mold break. Oh, good job right now. Fire oh, Too early, though. G-Money is still really high up and yeah. gets the punish for it. Yeah, I like that when he predicted a fire breath earlier. And oh my god, these combos. Ooh. Wait a minute. Oh my Wait a minute. Ah, G Money moving right now. Uh, not a big punish there, but back off stage to reset the scenario. Bowser with full rage, though. Yeah, this is really scary, but honestly, G Money is doing his match. Uh, nice, nice bait on the back here there by Kawhi. I said he was careful, no and way. right now. He's got to be so careful. This is full rage Bowser we're oh, talking about. Ready? Ah. Yeah, that definitely was in a favorable trade from Kawhi. Trying to forward, tell his side B. Both knocked in the air, and G Money had enough recovery to finish that stock. Yeah. Oh, trying to get him again. All right, big percent here, not far behind. Uh, G Money, not a good option right there. Oh, Kawhi sending him back off stage. Yeah. No good. two frame. Yeah, now this is combo time for G Money against the edge. He tries want... for the down air. I respect it. Look I respect what the first stock. Listen, you got to do it against Bowser. If you can get him on the early percents like that, you're winning. Oh, he tried to see if he would get up and get another down air. G Money being a little greedy right now. Nice up tilt call out on the jump. Yeah, now they're even on percent, and honestly, it can go either way. Even though Hawaii is right now with the 84 percent, G Money. Oh no, that Back was throw to set him off. Yeah, I did not like that down there on the platform. Nice grab, Kawhi. Yeah. Oh, the back air. Yeah. Oh. I'm gonna do a fair warning for all players that come to a CFL event or anything in Orlando. Make sure you have Make headphones. Make sure you have headphones. Always, always. No, Kawhi with the air dodge in. The oh, downer connects. Trying to punish. No, he oh, misses. Oh my God. Definitely no. spaghetti right now. Oh from my God. Players, but Kawhi able to come up on top, pushing G Money on the edge. No, it back misses. On, back on center stage, both players oh. trying to get these final kills. No. Oh my, oh my god, he wasn't able to turn around, but it's okay, Kawhi didn't. And that's going to be it! That's going to take game one! Let's go! And we can hear it from both my co-commentators and the crowd. Oh, no, that's man. what we want to hear, bro. This Kawhi is... with the comeback, baby! That's what I'm talking about! That's the face of man like, oh my god, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I did that. What a comeback. I mean, yeah. that was such spaghetti neutral right there. Both players whiffing yeah. both of their punishes really yeah. hard. But I like the, the thought process by G-Money right now. But, Kawhi, what the heck? They, they can't be doing this to my heart, man. I cannot take this. It is so stressful. Both players are playing so well, and I'm stressing out. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, once again, I said this. I still believe G-Money being the wild card. Mm -hmm. Anything can go. Because you saw that, even though it was a little bit scramble right there. No, because G-Money still... had it. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, he just has to really focus on getting the kill option out. The problem was he was really baiting for back air, and that's kind of why he lost that game, was he got red really hard. Kawhi knew the approach that he wanted, he just needed the punish, and he got it, unfortunately. G-Money, 
I think G-Money is really winning the neutral majority of this game, though. I mean, look at this. He's getting 60-70% off of these interactions. That's what Falco wants. Yeah, and already on 91% on Kawhi. G-Money almost got that trump. Uh, but not enough on the timing there. Kawhi getting it off again. Yeah, it's in this neutral battle and just being combo food right now for G-Money's Falco's attacks. But still, 136%, got to grab on Falco and anything can happen. He's got to be careful, Bowser at max rage yet again. Good jabs, G-Money on 79% off the edge. Again, it didn't work again, trying to counter that side B. And now it missed down aired on the platform, gave G-Money what he needed to back air into a stop. And he got rid of that rage too, really, really important. I think Kawhi's got to focus on... <gasps> He's got to focus on getting these kills, and that was a set up and a half. Wow. I need, I need some water. I'm speechless. I'm speechless too, man. I, I don't even know what to say. I mean, look at this. G Money with the percent, though. All right, 60% lead right now. Kawhi kind of struggling to find an in. This is why I can't be a proper commentator. I'm still speechless from that. That was just crazy, mm -hmm. unable, like. Almost a whooshy finger hold. Whooshy finger hold? Please explain that again. So when you get hit by Bowser down beyond shield and it breaks, you are stuck in the shield break position. If you're at 30, 40% and Bowser fully charged S smash you, you're dead. Kawhi's signature is the whooshy finger hold. I love that. You get held name, in skadoosh, man. You are gone. I love there's a name for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but G Money is able to bring this back. Oh, the up air! Wow, what a what a good kill! Down smash! Listen, man, I think Kawhi. What a side B snatch! And back at last off with even though percentage for G Money, would it even really matter? I respect the back off for both players right there on the shield. Neither of them wanted to choose a risky option. Yeah, that's what I love about both. Well, I don't know right there. I was about to say, both of them be very careful. And then Kawhi throws down a down B just like that. Oh, what a grab! Yeah, good. Climbing up on this percentage, but so is G Money. Poking his shield at the perfect moments to get his combos. So why are you gonna go for the edge card? Yeah. You saw that. She was ready for the down B. I, I wouldn't. Hey, honestly, that's a good Bowser option. I mean, it's safe for you to grab ledge like that. Oh no, that was a scary moment for G Money. Can he come back? What a good way to counter at the side B this time. Oh my god, that was a scary roll. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh. CFL cheering! And that's gonna be it! Kawhi taking it 2 0 against G Money! Unbelievable. These upsets we're having this bracket. Oh. Yeah. 